Hello, welcome to Gemstone Tarot Wednesday. I don't know what it even is. The 16th of August, 2023, new moon in Leo. I do like a new moon and a fire sign actually. So make the most of it, do your stuff, you know, do your new moon rituals, whatever they may be. I don't know why I'm suddenly dancing. Maybe it's like, I'm gonna be folk woman, half jogging, half dancing, giving it a load of new moon in the back garden. Anything could happen. Let me know your new moon rituals in the comments section. I always like to know. Not much happening in the street today. There is some drilling going on though, intermittent. It's not as bad as it could be. We're using Tarot of the Golden Wheel. Here it is. This is a very nice deck, isn't it? Recently discovered. That's the Queen of Cups on the front. Um, and it is by Mila Lysenko. Very, very nice. So what do we need to know? New Moon and Leo, what do we need to know? I'm glad the sun's out for this, as it should be. Oof. Okay. No, don't need reversals today. Cripes. Okay. There's a lot here to do with clenching and releasing. <laughs> it's a bit like, you know, when you do those um, meditations and they make you clench all the muscles and then release them. Oh, nice. Okay, good. We end on a high. Um, I'm going to go for an overall energy card either way. Nice. We're going to need that. Okay. Queen of Pentacles comes up as our overall energy card. And honestly, I'm not really surprised because the Queen of Pentacles is known to us as the Queen of Velvet Waiting. And there's something about getting this card that is about knowing that there is a season for things and it's something you don't take account of when you're getting what you want. When you're getting what you want, you tend not to think about it. You're like, I like this, more of this please. You know what I mean? It's that kind of energy. But with this, it's whether the stuff is coming to you or whether it isn't, this attitude, feeling will pay dividend. For some reason, I've got the Beatitudes in my head. I'm trying to remember what they were. I'm sure I did them in theology. Let me just have a quick look while I'm talking to you. It's happening live, people, um, because they're important. I must be channeling it because I don't even know what they are. Right. Here we go. Is it? Oh, yeah. Okay. All this blessed are the poor in spirit, or they will inherit the kingdom of heaven. Okay, so it's like announcing blessings, okay? Counting blessings, announcing blessings, not necessarily for yourself. In other words, it's more ecumenical. We're getting very kind of theolo theological today. More ecumenical than that. It's for you and everyone as a whole, for all of the people, okay? There is a feeling universally in the energy of today that says jam tomorrow or whenever, get used to it. I don't suppose that would have been quite the same as the Ser Sermon on the Mount if he'd have just kind of got up there and went jam tomorrow or whenever, get used to it as you were. Thank you very much. Do you know what I mean? These days it probably would have been on Twitter or whatever it's actually called these days. Anyhow, next to it, we get the Two of Swords. So you see where I'm coming from. Two of Swords is very much this energy. It's interesting, this card. It's kind of like got somebody roped between two swords. It's one way of doing it, isn't it? So the Two of Swords is neither now nor summit. And here we are with the full moon in the background. So think about a couple of weeks time Think about the stretch from the new moon to the full moon and the cycle and what that means. And the whole process with a new moon of um, sowing the seeds of something. 
and then moving towards the full moon when you're releasing what needs to be released so you can actually reap what you sow. I know, gosh. Um, Two of Swords is a card of stasis. It's a bit like a pip card for the hanged man. It has an energy for me of not only do you not get to go one way or the other right now, but you also are almost growing a solution in the stasis while you're there. I was going to say while you're waiting, but you're not waiting. You're just there. It's very important because waiting is an active thing and it tends to be anxious and active and sweaty. Two of Swords is not that. It's more of finding the calm. Okay, you are the slack between the ropes. God, where are these readings coming from at the moment? Leave me a comment, let me know. Anywho, okay, next card we get Four of Pentacles. Sun in Capricorn, of course. Four of Pentacles is a card of having a, or keeping a full purse, keeping your purse shut and it can literally be about investment. So it may be that you're being conservative about investing, conservative about your pocket money, whichever way, big or small, doesn't matter. It's the energy of the piggy bank. Okay, so what's in your piggy bank? How are you going to keep it there? And again, it's really important with this energy because what you can find is the card of the miser. You know, you get those lovely uh, Rider Waite styled cards this one's a bit more subtle, like somebody's put the money in the trunk and they're just making sure the lid's shut, you know, nice and easy does it. It's not the same as when the guy has kind of sat on a pentacle, stuffed one up his, down his pants, up his jumper, on his head, you know, it, the whole trying to take a crisp out of a toddler's crisp packet, not going to happen. This is more finding this really beautiful energy in between where you're I want to say cool like the Fonz, but it just makes me so old. And Happy Days used to make me feel sad. Did you ever get that? I used to watch it. Of course, it was quite glamorous then to have an American television program on, on British TV. But for some reason, even then, and even though it was called Happy Days, for some reason it used to make me feel a bit maudlin and a bit sad. Do let me know if I'm not the only one. Or if I am, you're like, no, Gemma, you're the only one there. Um, in the middle, we've got the Eight of Cups. Saturn in Pisces, which of course it is in Pisces, and I should know. And Saturn is retrograde at the moment too. And we've got an eclipse at the top and a load of cups. Two remain in the upright. That's quite generous for an Eight of Cups. The rest, you know, don't know whether you kick them over, you know, like kicking the cups on your way out or whether they just fell over. That's the release that will happen in a couple of weeks time around the time of the full moon. Allow your grip to slacken and for things to leave you that are not for you at this point. And then we cheer up a little, thank God, it's like we get the nine of cups. Jupiter in Pisces, yeehaw. So now you get the chance, and I think this is more towards um, the full moon, to imagine, to dream and to love and to want what you want, just because you want it and it gives you emotional happiness and satisfaction. And then next to that, the star, woof. This is a card of manifesting, it's a card of being in a different dimension, being in your own beautiful knowledge and knowing that you can conjure something. It's a gorgeous energy. Now we're going to have an oracle from the Sacred World Oracle by Chris Walder. Some of them have animals on. I don't know if I'm going to be able to identify them. I know. I feel it's you. Oh gosh, that's fine. I can identify that. I feel like I can anyway. 23, which is air. And here we get kind of all the different elements of air. We get beautiful skies, which are blue, which they are at the moment. 
we get the storm, we get electricity, we get air in all of its elements, okay? I think this is something to do with communicating, it's something to do with thinking, but it's also to do with one element can be seen in so many different ways, depending on how you look at it, okay? Whew, there's a message in there for all of us. Leave me a comment, let me know your thoughts on happy days, and I'll see you soon. Namaste.